school. I don't know that I created anything in college, but then I did go back to it. And, you know, so I do a little bit of everything. I do some drawing, but like my art is really knitting and crocheting. As you know. Yes, thank you, mom. <laughs> I kind of never stopped doing art, um, but I stopped drawing per se. Uh, I used to be really good at drawing. But then I kind of stopped doing that when junior high and I never stopped doing art, but like, I like to crochet. I just learned how this last year during quarantine. Mm -hmm. um, and then while I was in the hospital, um, the hospital where I live um, has a program with the local art museum and they put boxes together. And so I did these little like Zen tangles of my kids' names. Oh, so nice. I just like did that. So that was kind of new for me. And then I tried doing a dog and it like it's so sad, guys. It's really sad. No, that's good. No, it's not. But it no. looks terrible. No. I disagree. Like, anyway. <laughs> it's fun. Thank you for sharing us, I miss all my Arizona people. And so good village. to meet you. I miss you, Shannon. <laughs> it's like adult and show. Yeah, it's like adult show and tell. So when I um when I first started school for art therapy, like my first day, you know, of grad school, I arrived there with you know all my supplies, and we go into this room, and there's cubbies. There's literally cubbies in the room, and just art supplies like crayons and colored pencils like sitting out on the table and I thought like I'm not sure if I'm in grad school or in kindergarten again but I'm kind of excited so I want you to approach making art today like that like you did you know when you you know got into your kindergarten classroom and they were just art supplies and you didn't know any better to think like whether you're good at it you just you doodled you scribbled you put some color on the paper and have fun with it <laughs> yep. <laughs> Learned everything you need to know in kindergarten. Yep. <laughs> Great. Well, before we uh, move on, would anyone else like to share, um, you know, about about the, when they stopped making art? Okay. Um, well, I asked because a lot of people do stop making art around like junior high and, you know, after the end of junior high, going to high school. I think part of that is you have to pick electives. And if you decide you're not Art, you usually don't go forward with it, but um, you know, like I said, this isn't a good or a bad. This is this is just you know making art um, and being creative. Okay, so I'm going to start. So I'm hoping we've gathered our art supplies. So we're going to make a finger labyrinth. And a finger labyrinth, um, if you're familiar with a with a labyrinth, this is a small version just for uh, meditation. Um, Kind of introspection, relaxation. And so uh, I'm going to kind of try to do this backwards. So pick a color. Um, we're going to use, you're going to want to use a pencil that you can erase, hopefully, if you have that, because you might make a mistake and you'll want to be able to correct that. So you want to make your marks pretty light. And you can go back over it when you're done. You may There's choose no mistakes in art, only happy accidents. Come on. Yeah, but you know what? I agree, but your labyrinth, if it doesn't, <laughs> you want to be able to get all the way through your labyrinth and back out. So that's the only part that, yeah, that, and you, you might be a happy accident, but it might get a little frustrating to get stuck in your labyrinth. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to um, start with the suggest you make a, you work in the middle of your page. So we're going to make a cross. Um, that's, I want to make sure I, you guys can see it. Here we go. So we're going to make a cross. Can you guys see that? It's a little you know, yes. glare going on. Okay. No, I can see. We can see it. Okay, so when you've got your cross, the next step we're going to do is to make brackets. You're going to want to leave space so that your finger fits, but I'm going to show you what I mean. So 
that's what our bracket's going to look like. And we're going to do four of them. We're going to do one in every corner. And once you've got your cross and your brackets kind of diagonal from the corner of the bracket, we're going to do a dot. So we've got dots right here. And at any time, if you have a question, feel free to just let me know. Okay. So now we're going to go connect all of these, um, these points in order to make our labyrinth. So we're going to start in the middle. Make the loop and connect it to that first bracket. Is it hard to see? Got it. Like a curve? Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. I realize I've got to make myself big so I can make sure I see what you guys see. Okay, so then just to the, the left or my left, we're going to connect this to the next. I'm going to connect this to the dot. And we're going to keep going around from, I guess, counterclockwise, connecting all the points. So we're going to connect this dot to the edge of the bracket. Connect this bracket. Oops. Edge of the cross. Okay, we have our last dot. Take this all the way around. Take this bracket around and bring it to the edge of the cross. And once we get there, we should have a finger labyrinth. Okay. okay, so let me know if it would be helpful for me to do this again, or if you have any questions. I started too high, so I've got to erase and make it a little bit lower. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm just seeing the message that says it's hard to see. I hope that it's a little easier to see now that I've brought it closer. But let me know. You can let me know in the chat box or um, you can just let me know out loud if you'd like me to, to show again how to make it. Yeah, I totally messed up. I had to erase all of it. Okay, <laughs> let's do it again. Yeah, let's do it again. Rochelle, would you be able to, um, so on here, you can share your screen and do like a, a whiteboard on the actual Zoom? Do you think, would, oh, would that yes. be easy for you to do that on, do on that. here? So if you hit share screen, it'll give okay. you, it'll pull up the options. You, 
enable it for me, please? Then oh, yes. I'm happy to do that. Here, you should be. Give me one second. Okay, you should be good to go. Okay. Hmm. I don't see the whiteboard. So when you hit the green share screen button, um, it should be if you are you do you only have one monitor up? I do. Yeah, so it should be the, the next option over. If not, maybe um, it should it should be under the basic options. Should be a whiteboard. Um, maybe it'll pull up iPhone, iPad. Hmm. There's not a whiteboard yeah. option. Maybe under There's advanced. There's not a whiteboard option. Um, when I click share screen, it shows me entire screen, application window, and Chrome tab. But none uh, of those have the whiteboard under them. Uh, maybe under advanced. There's nothing under advanced. I don't have an advanced section. Oh, I see. Maybe I'm not sure if oh. maybe it's a. We'll do it on here again. Okay. Sorry, I was distracted. <laughs> Catching up with an old friend from college days who's having a baby boy this summer. It's pretty exciting. Nice. Okay. So, um, got the cross part. I got the little L parts, and then I got the dot parts. Oh, this one's not good. So it's easy to kind of go too large with it. So you kind of just need only need to have enough space for your finger to, to pass through. So you'll do your cross. Then you have a bracket in each corner of your cross. You got that part. And then there's a dot. Maybe I'll see if I can make those darker dots. Okay. So to start off, we're going to take, we're going to start with the center of our cross and connect it to this first bracket. Ah. And that's going. I guess clockwise. We're working from counterclockwise going clockwise. So then we'll come this next bracket and bring it over to the dot. I'm going to take the dot, bring it over to the corner of this right bracket. You can go at your own pace. Bracket. Over to the edge of the cross. Cross around. And I lost a little space in there, but it's okay. I can go back and fix it. I'm going to bring this bracket around. To the dot. I'm going to bring the dot around. Edge of that bracket there. I'm going to take this final bracket and around. Pull across. Got it. 
Okay. So I hope everyone's got a labyrinth. And if, if you don't, no worries. We're going to do something else too. So if the labyrinth didn't work out for you, we can, um, that's okay. Um, there are finger labyrinths. You know, if you go, if you search online, you can find a finger labyrinth um, and print that out if it was a challenge to make. There are also, you can find instructions and YouTube videos on how to make them online too. So if you want to try this again, um, there's YouTube tutorials. On them. So we've got our labyrinth. And um, does anyone have experience using a labyrinth? I mean, I walking it or there's yeah. a beautiful one in santa fe new mexico i forget the name of the church but it's gorgeous okay yeah there's a little one by my house like outside on the side of a church that i've walked <laughs> yeah i almost forgot about that okay. also at the um the casa retreat in uh, scottsdale they have a good labyrinth there and that one has been meaningful to me okay very nice thank you it's good so, you know, the, uh, the thing that makes a labyrinth different from a maze, um, as you know, a lot of us probably know is that you, you know, you go in and you go to the center and then you come back out to the same point. So you don't get lost. Um, if you take your time, you're not going to get lost. Um, you will, you know, you will get where you're going and you'll get back. So it's, and it's, it's a journey um, using a labyrinth. So. This is something that you want to take your time with and do slow. You don't have to rush. Um, there's no race to, to make your way in and to get back out. But before we, we trace our labyrinth, um, I'd like you to think of an intention for yourself, so whether that's to, you know, to relax, to be creative, to um, enjoy art like a kid, create some kind of intention for yourself. And then at the mouth, the opening of your labyrinth, you can create a symbol to show that intention. So a symbol is just a mark. It can it can be a, a fancy mark, it can be a really simple mark. I chose the same symbol. <laughs> I don't know if you can see it. A little. Let's see if I can see it on the. I've got my self pin. That way I can make sure you can see. Oh, yes, I see. Like mother, <laughs> like daughter. I guess so. learning says. <laughs> what does the heart represent for you? Peace. Peace. Okay. <laughs> I also chose the same symbol. <laughs> <laughs> what does it mean for you, Ashley? Um, just self-love, acceptance. Yeah. Me too, but I put a little dollar sign in there. <laughs> okay. Because <laughs> I need some money to come my way. <laughs> Love and money. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> and mine is uh, to remind myself to be gentle with myself. And I was going to do breathing. I was going to make some kind of symbol around breathing, but I really wanted blue and I don't have it right here in front of me. <laughs> so no other color felt right. So I figured and it wasn't, it wasn't meant to be. So this is what I wanted. Okay. So um, let's see, I kind of want to, I guess, talk about this first. So when you become a parent, it's, there's like quite a journey. Um, there's things that you, before you were a parent, you know, that you may have done that you don't have time for anymore, like hobbies um, that, you know, are, it's hard to make time sometimes for hobbies when you're actively caring for, you know, infants, toddlers, school age kids. Um, so there are things that you, you may have had before that you kind of like let fall to the wayside or that you chose to let go. Um, and then there are also going to be things that you've gained. Um, 
being a parent. So let's kind of keep that in mind um, and keep this intention that you set for yourself in mind. Um, yeah, no, during the pandemic, no babysitters, trying to start a business. Okay. Let's see, I was trying to get to the chat, but I lost it. Having your own bathroom time, most definitely. So I'm going to invite you now to, to take your time um, and trace your finger through your labyrinth and, and see what that experience is like for you. You can, to relax and ground yourself, you can focus on your breathing. Once you get to the center of your labyrinth, you can trace your way back out. Would anyone like to share about their experience of tracing the labyrinth? I kept getting lost. <laughs> I think I need to, to make it a little bigger. Okay. Um, and I wonder if like, for me, I feel like bigger would be better for my finger mm -hmm. to stay in line. But I also... I Right, like I also thought I was uh, maybe going too fast too. And I wondered if the pencil inside, you know, just to like stay in the lines would help me to like focus at first, like practice. <laughs> yeah, and it might be good to use, you know, that 
the back end of your pencil or pen if your finger you know is too yeah. too big for your your labyrinth um you could always just like a back. stylus sort of yeah <laughs> that's yeah. not a bad idea or a closed pen you know yeah 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 Would anyone like to, would anyone else like to share? One thing um, I noticed for myself is I kept feeling like I was lost. Um, it, it, I've used labyrinths before, but it doesn't move the way I expect it to for some reason. And so I think, okay, I'm nearly at the center point. Um, I'm almost there and, and then it's different and then I find myself um, like, oh, no, there's still more to go and there's still more looping to do. So um, I kept thinking that I was lost um, when in fact I was on the right path. Um, I see in the chat, I wanted to focus so that my mind would be able to clear all other distractions. I think with mine, like, I was so focused on meeting my intention that I was like, mantraing myself with everything okay. I could think of that fit the intention on the way in. And by the time I got close to the middle or the, the end point, I was thinking, kind of like you like, Oh, I think I'm almost there. And got a little distracted by that, but then decided to just focus on my breathing on the way back out. <laughs> okay. I had, um, I, I process out loud, so I had written in the chat. Um, I found that I drew a lot of hard right angles when I made the labyrinth. And as I was going through it, it, it kind of stopped me every time I came to one. Okay. It sounds like a experience for you to be kind of in that like. Right that elbow when you wanted to kind of just like be in right. a curve. I, I actually, I agree. Like, um, Jessica, I went back in and like changed mine, like softened all my, like rounded mm. all my corners. Yeah. I, mm -hmm. I felt the same thing. I was like, no, this is too like uh, rough or hard. Yeah. That makes me interested. Like what I, I wonder you guys can think about like for you, what is, what is that? What is that symbolism behind the feeling challenged by the corners, wanting curves instead of corners? Um, for me, it brings up like thinking about that. I, I think this past year um, where, you know, a year ago or a, a year and two months ago, all of us had an idea of what we were gonna be doing for the next year. Um, you know, for the next few months, and then things just changed. They were different than we expected. We had to kind of um, move through those those hard those hard corners. I, I'm looking back at, at my labyrinth, and what I see is wherever those like um, corners are that it was so squared. I squared too. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. What would Freud say? <laughs> That's interesting that you say that though, Michelle. I think it's really, for me, any very indicative of my parenting journey, right? Because I'm a rule follower. So I would really like some outside authority to tell me the right way to do all the things. But good luck with that. I, right. <laughs> but <laughs> I have this kind of intention of really trying to create less rigidity and more kind of flowing. And so that's what I think maybe why I found that a frustrating experience with the labyrinth. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you for sharing that, Jessica. I would offer um, that in that, like, that rigid structure that you've created yourself, um, you know, allowing your breath and allowing, you know, allowing your breath to guide you into relaxation, even with the rigidity. Because um, I think when we push up against, you know, a force, like there's a force there, you push up against it now you're just creating like this this mm -hmm. tension and pressure so if we can accept where we have like you know those hard right angles i think we will find ourselves kind of in a better in a better place um, at least more more relaxed and in a challenging place 
I'm curious as to what mine will look like tomorrow when I, I'm not in a rush, when I've reflected back on the symbolism of the straight corners and the rounded corners and I have a bigger piece of paper. Um, I think that this also, like everything else in life, sometimes some of us have to process it. Mm -hmm. and yeah. um and then try it again and and not say well this wasn't good just say well this is different than it because everything's different tomorrow i may say something completely different to sarah than i did today you know it's just mm -hmm. just the way it goes oh, i love you tomorrow too eileen <laughs> <All right. laughs> rochelle i do want to let you know that we have just over uh 10 minutes left in this session oh. Okay. Um, so I know I, I hate to be the bearer of time markers <laughs> and bad news, <laughs> but just so that you're aware of the time. Okay. So with that, I will invite you to, um, to think of any, you know, to maybe make some more symbols, maybe make some more marks on your paper, just, you know, a little drawing, um, sharing what came up for you as far as maybe what you, what you let go of what you released, um, you know, mm -hmm. becoming a parent and what you, what you gained. So I invite you to make a little bit of art about that. And since we only have 10 minutes, you can feel free to, like Eileen said, get back to it tomorrow, try it again, um, or, or continue beyond this session when you have a moment. One thing I like about the finger labyrinth, it's so small, um, the way that I happen to make it on my page. And it's great because you can't get in a hurry. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree with you. Thank you for sharing that. So I remember um, that there, you know, was um, a question asked in the Q and A, and one of the questions was, um, "Is there a kind of art that's best for relaxation?" Um, and I would offer that whatever um, you feel comfortable with, whatever you enjoy, because art can be relaxing, um, but it can also be challenging. It can push you past your limits. Um, it can make you, you know, want to set it down and walk away and um, rip it up, you know, all kinds of different things. So I think it's, you know, choosing what feels good for you um, and just letting like pleasure, you know, be your guide and what art you might need. I appreciate that you've said, Rochelle, that one size doesn't fit all. Um, I was thinking about a book I read a long time ago called The Artist Way, and it's probably not something that I would pick up now, whereas, you know, I, I've been doodling in the coloring book that was given to me today. Um, mm -hmm. So I, I appreciate the fact that uh, not all, everybody can do the same stuff. And this, this whole time we were doing this, I was thinking about when I was a preschool teacher and how I loved making Play-Doh. I'm a sensory kind of person. And when I got stressed, I would just squeeze the Play-Doh and start it again. <laughs> and the kids were like, oh, let me do that. Um, so, you know, that kind of stuff too. Yeah. I so they, it. You know, art is, a, art, art is a sensory experience. And so, you know, letting it be, like letting it be a sensual experience, allowing it to, you know, the, the materials to speak to you, um, see, you know, see how they feel, see how you feel using them, because different things are going to bring up, you know, different feelings for people. Um, 
Another question was asked, does meditation always lead to relaxation? And I think that kind of comes just back to the same thing, um, you know, with, with art, like meditation can be relaxing. It can be challenging. Um, you can gain insight that you weren't expecting to gain. Um, and that can, you know, be confrontational sometimes. So um, if, you know, if you want to meditate and relax, you can set that intention for your practice. Um, and so then when those, when the, those, you know, hard corners come, um, if you set relaxation for your intention, you come back to that, you come back to your breath, um, you come back to what's grounding, you know, literally can put your feet on the ground, um, make sure, you know, you're seated firmly on the ground and, and bring yourself back to that relaxation. Because relaxation is a choice. Um, it is not a given in this world. Um, you have to choose relaxation. Mm. That's true. I, I, I want to show you guys mine. I don't really know why, but I like it. So I, I colored in my lines. Can, I don't know if you can see because I have a green screen, but yes. Can you see it? I, yep. I, I felt like it would maybe help me to follow and slow me down, I think. And this mm. was my symbol. Um, like this little like a little, star little star and a heart and a dot I don't know okay kind of felt it <laughs> <laughs> thanks for humoring me <laughs> oh, I appreciate your input like this is my jam session right here <laughs> <laughs> the arts uh, all right well I hate to do this to y'all but we are one minute towards the end here. We need to wrap up. I want to just say a huge thank you, Rochelle. Um, thank you so much for offering the answers um, that you shared for those questions that were in the chat in Whova. Um, I would encourage all of you that were here today to share your art if you would like to. Um, you know, take a photo, upload it to Whova so that we can see. Um, if you don't want to, no pressure. That is totally <laughs> fine and we respect that. Um, I would also like to let you know what's coming up next. Um, and so if you are going to the, one of the next sessions, you can do that or you can pop on over to the Q&A for this session and keep chatting with Rochelle. Mm -hmm. um, next up in this room, we have Who Am I Now with Nicola Henry. And then after that, let's see, in room one, we've got Kira English. She is going to talk about your relationship after baby. And then, of course, not least, we have in room three, creating a postpartum ecosystem to support new families. And that is with Jenny Beaver, our CEO and founder. So lots of great sessions coming up next. I kind of wish we could just stay here and do art for the rest of the afternoon, um, but you can do this at any time. I think that's the beauty of it. One of the beautiful things about art is we can come back to this, like Eileen was saying, we can come back tomorrow and do this all over fresh and see how different it is from today. So thank you again, Rochelle. We are going to be closing out this Zoom. Um, if you are staying here, just hang out. Um, if you're gonna be in Nicola's session, who am I now? Thank you all for joining us. We are so, so, so glad you're here with us online. I hope you're comfortable at home. I hope you're still wearing your jammies um, or your shirt and your jammy pants. It's all good. I've got low standards. Um, <laughs> so hang tight. Um, if you are staying in this session and you're gonna stay on this room, just go ahead and mute yourself for now because um, I'm not exactly sure how interactive the next session is. So we want to make sure we check in with our presenter. Um, and then, yes, I agree. This was fun, Michelle. Thank you. <laughs> Sarah, can I clarify something? Absolutely. Um, I, in my, my printed schedule, it says we have a break right now. Is that true? Do we have a break right now? Ah! We do have a break right now. Okay, we are gonna keep this Zoom room up. Thank you. I, I'm not exactly sure who was talking just now because I don't see everybody on my screen. Thank you um, <laughs> for reminding me. We do have a break, so don't. I'm not stealing your break. 15-minute um, break. We um, 
are going to go to those sessions at, let me check my schedule here, my printed schedule, so I don't make sure I make a mistake here. So 3 p.m. My apologies. All right, so under the restroom, grab a snack. Um, remember the leaderboard. Uh, go chat in the comments. Let's get some points racked up for everybody. If you wanted to customize your profiles as well, that gives you some points. So that's easy. You just type in who you are and and pop in a picture if you haven't already. Um, that'll win you some points. And um, there's those awesome prizes that we can all be in the running for, except for not us or MCs and, and uh, volunteers. We don't get to be in the running for those cool prizes. Um, so y'all gotta get in there. Um, free massage? Like, hello? It's a $100 <laughs> gift card to Massage Envy, you guys. So get in there, shout out in the comments, in Whova, everywhere, anywhere ask questions, and then we will stick around for just a little bit, uh, and then we will see you at 3 p.m. for our final sessions of the day. Two more sessions, everybody. All right. All right. Thank you all.